I hear the voice of one cry I hear the voice of one cry Prepare ye Prepare ye I love the book of Galatians. Yeah. Uh, we need to learn. We need to be a people that are always learning. And we I've read this book probably 30, 40 times in my life studied through it. I don't know. I'm, I'm just putting that out there. And, and I need to approach that book the same as I've never approached it before. I need to allow that to scrub and to get into my mind. And to, if I have drifted in truth, I need to allow the Word of God to bring me back into line yeah. with, with what the Word says about us as a people, about me as an individual. Because sometimes we could be in the body of Christ and we'll go through a season where we're learning certain aspects, you know, how God teaches us. And we can learn certain aspects and we can allow certain truths to slide a little bit. And God has to bring a refresher to us, to bring us back into line with His Word. So we don't give up the liberty of grace. That we're not saved by works, but we're saved by grace. Amen. Not by works that anyone should boast. Amen. We're saved by grace. Amen. And we're saved unto good works. Yes. Not saved by good works. Amen. Can I get an amen? We're saved amen. so we can walk into some good works. But we're not saved by what we're walking into. We're saved by the blood of Jesus. Amen. Oh man, if I was saved by anything else, I would have never been saved. Because whenever I was a wreck and a wretch, and some of y'all don't know nothing about that, I do. And the Lord came by His grace and gave me a holy hug. And He just like put His arms around me and I was forgiven and brought into the body of Christ. And that's born again. Amen. I was born again. Uh, that's just all was to it. Next day, I was around this guy, and he's cussed in the name of the Lord. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> it's like somebody hit me in my gut. I was like, oh, no. Yeah. And I was like, what just happened? It was the Holy Spirit in me that was, was being, uh, being hurt by what that man was saying about our God. You know what I'm saying? They were cussing. And the Holy Spirit inside of me just cringed. Yes. And all of a sudden, I was like, man, i got the Holy Spirit now. I don't know about you, but I remember a time when I didn't have the Holy Spirit. And I remember what it was like to be all strung out on just different things and different thought patterns in life. And the Holy Spirit came and He did a work. And I, I want to celebrate that. I want to celebrate that in the name of Jesus. And I never want to go to the law and think the law was saving us. There's some type of good works or something. You know, I get it, man. There is a hyper grace thing going on in our society. And, and the hyper-grace theory is you can be saved by grace and just live any old way you want to live. And, and the people are believing it and they're walking into it and they're just living like hell, excuse my language, and, and they want to live and they want to bring it with them and they're just saying, I'm a, a child of God. And I'm like, well, if you're a child of God, He's going to be inside of you fashioning you yes. to where you have, uh, you start to live according to Him. His Holy Spirit starts to work inside of you fruit of the new life. Yeah. And it's not like we're keeping the commandments, but it's a new life that we're having. And we're experiencing forgiveness and the grace of God to change from the inside out. So if somebody's saying that they are saved, I want to see some at heart attitude. It's not that they're perfect. <clears throat> it's that they're repentant. Yes. And they're saying, I was wrong. And I'm, I'm confessing with my mouth. I need to change. I need a new heart. I need, I need to get my life right. I need to get certain aspects. I need to forgive. And, and uh, the Christians that are around that person need to say, okay, I want to grab you by the hand. And I'm going to be a good brother or sister. And I'm going to try to help you walk through that without trying to lay a bunch of law on you on. to where you have to you know, uh, observe something, to where you become mechanical in your walk with the Lord. You know what mechanics are, don't you? <laughs> Cookie cutter Christians, you know? You dress like me, you gotta look like me, you gotta have a haircut like me, you gotta have clothes like me. Yes, come on. Can't wear no makeup, can't have no jewelry, can't have no nothing. 
Can't ride no motorcycle. My brother, man, he told me one time, you can't ride that motorcycle. Prideful. I was like, it's the only transportation I got. You want to buy me a car? And I went right by the church. And I, I, it didn't bother me for a minute. I knew my liberty in Christ and I was going to my... I was going to the Spearfield Four Square Church, man, on my motorcycle. <laughs> All year round. I get off in the winter, man. Yeah. Pastor, look at me. What are you doing here? I'm getting my praise on. I may not be able to walk, but I'm going to praise God tonight. I'll be frozen. It's something when you get hungry for God, though, isn't it? Yeah. You get hungry for God, man, you'll go there. You'll get there somehow or another. You will. Oh, yeah. Yes. I mean, I was hungry, and God was showing up. And I was going to get there. Hair all messed up. Cold. I'm talking about cold. Well, you got to get down beside the motor of the motorcycle to get yourself warm. I'm talking about cold, God. Still wanting to go to church. That, that's, that's good stuff right there, isn't it? Man, I'd like to have, you know, I believe we're like that. You know, we have that kind of fire where it just consumes you. Well, you don't care. You don't care. You're like, I don't care what my friends think or what anybody thinks. I'm on fire with Jesus and here we go. Here we go. And if I have to roll up in the church on the back of a motorcycle being doubled down the road in 30 degree weather, I ain't asking nobody to do that. I'm just saying. There's crazy people like I was that would do that and roll up in the church and get their praise on. Because God was moving and people were getting saved. People get delivered. I want to be in the midst of all that. Because I wanted it for myself. And then once I figured out I got it for myself and God was moving on my behalf and I was getting free, well, I wanted to be up where the free people were. You know, getting their praise on and worship on. Amen. Now the epistle of, uh, the purpose or the epistle of, of Galatians. Galatians is uh, not a city. It is actually a, a place. It's like the Appalachian. If you talk about the Appalachian area, it's talking about a widespread area. So Galatians is a widespread area. It's not a town or anything. It was like a, a hub or a many towns. It was many small towns and a few bigger towns in there. And uh, there is a, a tension. Can y'all see this? The light just went out. It's all right. You give me a second. I got remote controls here. <laughs> so right here, there's a tension uh, in Galatians. If you read about Galatians, you see, Paul was he went and he was teaching uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ that you were saved by grace and not by works. You were saved by grace. And you see, there were some people that were coming out of Jerusalem that had got saved by grace, but they were pulling along their past with them. And some of them were doing it purposely, and some people were doing it ignorantly. Some people preach works and all that stuff and in the law, and they do it knowingly. And some people do it ignorantly because it's in their past, and they don't know how to rightly divide the word. So here's these people coming out of Judea, and they're dragging the law with them. And they didn't know really the truth about it all. Some of them did. Some of them didn't. You have to give them that, don't you guys? Yeah. You know, they didn't have meanness in their heart. They were actually trying to teach people to follow the Lord, a lot of them. But they were bringing a lot of ritual with them. So Paul says you're saved by grace alone. And the Judaizers, which were the people out of Judea, that were Jews that were raised in the law, rules, they were bringing Jesus saved, Jesus resurrected, they were bringing a lot of the truth of the Lord, but they were bringing their past with them. So they were bringing the Ten Commandments and the law and everything with them as they brought the Word of God as they knew it. Jesus saves, Jesus does this, but you can't be sanctified if you don't look at the Word of the law. That's what cleans you up. That gives you direction in your life. But that's not the gospel. That's not the gospel. And we can find in our own life, you know, uh, Judaizers. To where, and, and I don't want to be one myself to where I bring my past 
and bring a set of rules with me and say you can be saved by grace, but you've got to follow these rules that I have with me. Because that right there is not grace any longer. That's works. That's works. And in this society and what we're learning now, people use this and they go way out in left field. But there's people out all the way out in left field with the works and, and being saved by, you know, and it shows in the way that you dress. I mean, not just being modest, but I'm talking about really, yeah. you've got to dress a certain way and you've got to talk a certain way and you've got, to, you've got to kind of drive the right cars and you've got to have the right hairstyles and you know what I mean? And, and, and that right there is some rules that has nothing to do with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah. So here's Paul, and Paul's saying, guys, you don't, you know, you're not looking at this thing right. You, you, you're bringing this stuff in, and you're actually bringing people into bondage, and you're perverting the gospel. You're perverting it. And what is a perversion? Something. Well, I, I, I think that that's a good uh, description, but I think perversion is more like this. If I think right, y'all help me. Perversion is something that God created. God created something beautiful, and the devil perverted it. So it was something that was pure and good, and there was a twist to it. It's like lust. It's one thing to be attracted to your wife. It's another thing to have a spirit of lust. Well, lust is just something that God created the right thing, but then the devil perverted it to where it's out of balance now, and it's brought in a perversion. It's a lie. It's a truth with a twist. So Amen. these people came in, and the, and let's just read it real quick here, real quick. Uh, Galatians chapter one, verse one. And uh, just let me go over this real quick, just to catch you up. We will be going through the book of Galatians, so we're going to be going through this, and, and we need to go through this, guys. We need to go through it because the Lord's going to open this up to us. So verse 1, Paul an apostle sent not from men, not from by men, but by Jesus Christ, God the Father, who raised him from the dead, and all the brothers and sisters with me, to the churches of Galatia, to that region. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins to rescue us from the present evil age, according to the will of our Father, our God our Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, I'm going to just stop right there. I couldn't go much farther than that right there. It says right here, Grace and peace to you, verse 3, Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave, that word gave right there, it's just in verse, I think it's verse 4 right there, gave, the word gave. It really means something else in the Greek. Didomi is the, is the word. D-I-D-O-M-I -I is the actual Greek word. And what that means is paid. Paid. So if we read it this way, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ who paid Himself for our sins to rescue us from the evil age. So He paid the price for our sins. He paid the price for our present sins and our future sins and the sins of the past. He paid the price for sin Amen. and sins. So He paid the price for sin. What sin is, when you see this and it's just in the singular, it means the original sin, the sin nature of man. It means the sin that we were born into. If you see sin with an S on it, it means the sin that we practice on a day-to-day -day basis. The things that we allow into our lives. So we have the sin nature, which is sin. And then we have things that we get involved in and practice. That's sins with the S. And it says that He gave and He paid the price for our sins. The things that we habitually get involved in sometimes. The thing about getting saved by grace is that God can get in there and work with us to bring us out of the things that we practice in our life and we can't get rid of on our own. He paid a price for us to get us in there and get grace and work to get us out of that situation, out of the things that we have gotten abused in our life and the things that we can't lay down, bad thoughts, 
uh, hypocrisies and, and hatred and unforgivenesses. He gets in there by His grace and He can work with us. If we were saved by works, he, we, couldn't, we couldn't get any of that grace to where He can get in there and work with us to free us from ourselves. That's why when somebody comes up here and they say, you know, I've got a problem in my life and I'm battling this, I'm like, God can take care of this and He'll walk you into victory. Amen. He's not judging you where you're at. You're saved by grace. And He's going to bring you out of where you're at and bring you into His holiness. Oh, from glory to glory. From this one season to the next, you will change and become more like Him. We ain't starting out looking just like Jesus. When I looked in the mirror the next day after I got saved, I was still Tim McKenzie, but I had a new spirit on the inside of me. And, and I all wore and hell was getting ready to break out in my life. Because of where I used to hang out, they didn't want me hanging out there no more. Come on. And I didn't know where I belonged. I didn't feel right in the church or out there in the community. I was like, oh Lord. And then I found out I had a warfare going off the devil. I was like, well, who got you stirred up? <laughs> I ain't bothering you. Why are you after me? Yeah, I never heard of him before, hardly. I never knew anything about no spiritual warfare until I got born again. That's when I found out about spiritual warfare. Then I was like, oh, Lord, they told me everything would be all right when I walked down that aisle. <laughs> now I'm in a scurry that's going to last my lifetime. Here I am wrestling something I'm going to be fighting for the rest of my life. Y'all can say amen to all that, too. So here's, it says right here, Jesus Christ who gave himself, paid himself. Can you see that? There was a debt due that I could not pay. That he came and he says, I'll pay that debt. Yeah. Amen. Who am I to tell him that it wasn't enough? So the Judaizer said right here, they may not have cognitively said this, meant this, some of them did. They said, Jesus, we know that you paid something there, but it wasn't enough. Mm -hmm. Oh, you paid all right, but it wasn't enough. You got to keep the law, you got to keep your set of rules to be right with God. <coughs> it wasn't enough. We saying, if you hold to the to the doctrine of Jesus Christ, that it was enough. In fact, you know, whenever he was on the cross, and I remember Pastor Tony Atkinson teaching on this. Amen. When he was on the cross, he said it is paid in full. Amen. What he was saying is it is finished. Amen. It is finished. Do you all remember how to say this? To tell a stop. He said to tell a stop. And he, he, he just screamed out and he died on the cross. And whenever he said this to tell us that, it means that it was paid in full. It is finished. It is right with God. Thank you. Now, if I remember this teaching right, it's this. If you owe a fine and you go before a court or a judge, and you pay that price, he says it's paid. And you get to walk out. But somebody's got to pay that debt. Because if they don't, you don't pay that debt before long, they'll come and get your license. And they'll suspend your license and everything until that debt is paid. Yeah, that yeah. debt will follow you all through life until that debt is paid. But once that debt is paid, you're good as gold. What God was saying that day, what Jesus was saying on the cross, He says to tell us that. Paid in full. It's done. The judge is taken care of. Amen. The judge has been paid for your sin, guilt, for your sin. You're, you've been paid for. That is good news. So who are we to say, oh Lord, I understand this right here. It's been paid in full, but I need to throw some uh, rules out there for these people to follow. Because if I don't throw some rules out there, Lord, they'll able to get, do anything. They'll go out there and just do any old thing. That's partly true. A lot of people will go and they'll just say, well, I'll just stay where I'm at. The thing about where I was at in life, I was so miserable, I wanted a new life. Sin after a while will make you miserable. So you want to get out of it. You want to say, Lord, I'm ready, uncle. I'm ready, Lord. I'm tired of fighting this. I want to give my life to you and I want to follow you. You see... This is the way I understand this, guys. We are saved by faith alone and grace alone. Faith, by faith, you are saved by grace alone. 
It's not by works. Here's the thing. We, are, we want to have the fruit of the Holy Spirit in our life. Yeah. The fruit of the Holy Spirit. Somebody tell me what the fruit of the Holy Spirit is. Which there is no... Which against there is no law. For if you practice these, there is no law. So this right here is the fulfillment of the law. If we have the fruit of the Holy Spirit in us, the love, it says love hurts nobody. It, it wants the best for everybody. If you walk by love, the fruit of love, there's no law against love. So here we are, we have the fruit of the Spirit. This is the conduct that we build our lives out of right here, is the fruit of the Spirit. <coughs> we don't do it by any rules that we keep. We've got to have the fruit of Jesus Christ coming out in our lives. And if we have this going on, even if it's small little green little fruit like this, about as big as a, a persimmon or whatever they call those little things, little hard little fruit like this, that's enough. If I can see just a little bit of fruit in my life, I'm happy. Lord God, that'll grow and I can get a big and it can be lush, Lord God. It can be a big old tomato after a while. But I can use, Lord God, I'll be alright with just that little old tomato, Lord, because it's coming I may not be there yet, Lord God, but it is coming, Lord God. I'm getting ready to walk into something, Lord. Even though these people say I don't have it, Lord, I see something green there, Lord. And it may be a little itty bitty thing, but it's getting ready to grow. And it's got some seed in it in the name of Jesus. And it's going to spread, and I'm going to be fruitful. I'm going to be fruitful. But the thing of it is, to have this little itty bitty fruit like this little green little thing, you've got to have a lot of grace in your life. That's right. Come on. Because people are going to look at you and say, you ain't there. You're right, I'm not. And by the way, you're not either. <laughs> I see some green in you too. But by grace, that's going to grow. Oh, I ain't working. Lord God, I can't do it by works. Because if I start working for my salvation, I'm taking it into, I'm taking it into my own strength. That's right. I'm taking, I'm trying to do what only God can do. Only God can sanctify. Only God can clean us up. But if we try to clean ourselves up, guys, we end up in a mess. I remember I tried, I tried to do this. I'm going on a diet. I'm going to go on a diet. And the next day, I'm going to the pumpkin pie? There's something about us trying to do something in the flesh. And the flesh will act out. It gets yeah. worse. Get out of yeah, it gets worse. Oh, quit smoking cigarettes. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, hey, give me another one. I learned to do it this way. Lord God... And I'd pray about it. I was like, Lord, I want to step out into this and I want to do this, Lord. I want to quit smoking cigarettes, Father. Let's, I want, and I started talking to Him about it. Yeah. So when I took the step, I took a step in the Spirit. Yeah. And whenever I did that, I always came away victorious. Yeah. If I get to praying about you know, going in and doing a diet and I start to do it right on my knees and I ask the Lord and give, give me wisdom, Lord, and let me do what I need to do. But, and I do it in the Spirit first. Man, I seal something there. See, that's good stuff. Amen. See, whenever we do things in the flesh, and we're trying to do uh, walk out our Christianity in the flesh, things get ugly. Yep, right. See, the acts of the flesh. What are the acts of the flesh? Somebody just read it out. Does anybody know what it is right off hand? Paul said they're obvious. Sexual immorality. Impurity. Debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, which is conjuring, people doing spells and stuff like that. Hatred and discord and jealousies and fits of rage and selfish ambitions and dissensions and factions. So what this right here is actually people in Christianity, here we are, we start out by grace, and Paul says, who bewitched you to where you're going to try to finish it off by doing rules, by cleaning yourself up, by watching the law. He said, because whenever you start to try to do something in your own power, you're actually sowing seeds to the arm of the flesh. And before long, you'll start to have jealousies amongst you. 
Because you're not having the fruit of the Holy Spirit, which is love, peace, joy, and a sound mind and all those things. You're going to start walking in the arm of the flesh. And the flesh has very particular types of acts. And one of them is jealousies. And fits of rage and anger. And dissensions where people start to spread apart in the church. And you'll see one little group over here. And one little group over here. And there's a big divide in front of them. That right there is actually has nothing to do with the Holy Spirit when you see splitting in the church. When people start to gather in groups and one group's over here with such and such and another group's over here and such and such. And here's the pastor trying to lead the church, but they're split. Come on. That right there is an act of the flesh. Yeah. Yeah. That's factions. Yeah. That happens when people try to do Christianity on their own. Come on. That's Christianity done by the power of the flesh. Come on. That's not Christianity done by the power of the Holy Spirit. If you want to see if you're walking in the Holy Spirit in your life and you're carrying out Christianity in the power of the Holy Spirit, do you have peace? Do you have love? Are you forgiving and long-suffering? Do you have these grace fruits inside of you? Or are you acting out in the flesh and getting anger real quick? If you're getting angry real quickly of people, check your walk. Because somebody's trying to keep some rules. And they're not doing it about the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Come on, guys. Amen. But we can repent. Yes. If we do act out in rage. Some of us got to repent daily, don't we, sister? <laughs> Set up and give God glory. Stand up and give God glory. I'm being honest here. Amen. I have fits of rage, and then I have to repent. But I also have fruit in my life, so He's not done with me. So you got a little bit of both. I got both going on. I think we all do. I do. But the thing of it is, is the Lord says this. He said, if you clean water... And you can't be salty water at the same time. You can't have both. He said, either you are or you're not. Now, something can be dying in your life, and other something else can be coming alive. And I'm believing in your life that this is coming alive, this spirit walk, and this other stuff is dying out. Because at one time, I was rageful, man. I could get it on with the best. <laughs> with the law. Here comes the law. I'm talking about the law, guys. First name basis. I'm kidding, guys. No, I'm not. And I'm not there any longer. Right. I'm not there any longer. I'm not acting out like that any longer. I am more and more becoming like him. And I'm having this. And I'm aiming at this right here. Because I remember how I was born again. I was born again by grace. Called on the name of the Lord. And there he shows up. And he gives me a born again experience. And I didn't deserve it. I didn't own it. He gave it to me yeah. by grace. Oh, he's so good. oh, he is. He is. Yeah. And when I went to Bible college, they said, uh, God had already got me worked out, and He's working, He's cleaning me. God can clean us a lot better than we can clean ourselves. They had this paper there, and they wanted you to sign it. When's the last time you did this? And when's the last time you did that? And when did you do this? And have you cussed? And you did it? I was like, I've done it all. <laughs> and here's all these preacher kids up in that college. Oh, they all look good. And they sang good. They dress nice. And Here I come. And I'm saved by grace. <laughs> Thing of it is, by grace, I had cleaned. The God had cleaned all this stuff up. I was not that anymore, and I wasn't that anymore, and I wasn't that anymore. And I, that right there, and some of them said, I never was. And I was like, I was, but he saved me by grace. Amen. And so if somebody had a law, I fulfilled it because the Holy Spirit got in me and cleaned me up. Amen. That's the way you want to fulfill the law. Amen. Is allow the Holy Spirit to get in you and clean you up. Yeah. Don't do it by rules. Amen. 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 So anybody that comes in here, they're welcome here. Yes. If they come in here and they drag whatever with them, I'm not worried about that. That's right. I don't care how they're dressing. Just please cover it up. Amen. <laughs> and if they don't cover it up, they'll get on my blanket. <laughs> my fault. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Come on now. And you ladies don't be chasing anybody out of here. We'll take care of it. 
Blank, give him a blank. <laughs> sister, future sister, you gotta cover it up. But these ladies up in here, they may have fits of rage. They may get the arm with the flash going on. They've been saved by grace, but they'll, they'll act out. So you need to cover up. Come on, guys. Half of you are just looking at me like, really? I've been around church long enough, I know. They say, we'll get rid of her. Let me walk her to the door. I'll be whispering in her ear on the way out. I know that this is a, 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 this teaching right here. I'm not giving liberty for people to go out and do things. It says in the Word that different people, certain acts, will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the way that I get cleaned up is totally different than people that try to keep a law. I am asking Jesus to get inside of me through His Holy Spirit to clean me from inside out as a new creation. That I start walking according to God and he, what He wants for my life because I'm new and I'm being made new by the Holy Spirit. It's not because somebody over in the corner is checking things off on me that I'm accepted in the, in the, in the priesthood or in, in being a pastor. It's because God has gotten inside of me and started cleaning me up a long time ago. And here I am, I'm preaching, God, you got room for everybody up in here, Lord, and you're going to clean them from the inside out, Lord. Yeah. They don't have to wear certain things. They don't have to comb their hair a certain way. They don't have to have a suit, Lord God. You'll clean them from the inside out. Yeah. Amen. And that is grace, guys, when we get clean from the inside out. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, let me just uh, I'm gonna just throw this out here to you. I'm not going to go through all my dirty laundry. I forget most of those stuff. But I used to smoke marijuana. Shame on me. Amen. Shame on me. <laughs> I started smoking marijuana when I was nine years old. Down at uh, elementary school. See, my, my father died when I was real young, and here this guy comes up and said, Hey, come on over here. He was among playmates, you know. We just, and he said, hey, Look at this. And that, that started a big, long journey with me. So here I got saved, and this stuff was coming with me over into my new life, right? And, 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 and I started becoming miserable with, with what I was still doing. The Holy Spirit wouldn't let me rest. I'd go, hey, God. <clears throat> and then all of a sudden, I'm like, I, I hate this stuff. <laughs> I'm like, man, this makes you paranoid, and I'm losing my peace, and I don't sense God. I don't sense the Lord. I don't sense the Holy Spirit. It feels like the devil's on my back. And then all of a sudden, guess what? This goes. This goes right here. This marijuana stuff, I was like, it's got to go. Because the peace and the joy of the Lord is a whole lot better than this. A whole lot better. So I wasn't trying to be accepted by nobody. I was worried about me and God. And what God was doing in my life. And the peace of the Lord. And, and having joy in my life. And having victory in my life. And getting my prayers answered. That's what I was worried about. I wasn't worried about nobody and what they thought. I never was. I don't care. But I was worried about Him. And I was like, something done left. Something happened here. And I tell you, it didn't take me long. I may not have been the sharpest tool in the shed. But it didn't take me long to figure out. He, didn't, he wasn't pleased with that. So that I had to go. I have a girlfriend. Well, some, I had to clean that up. Because Jesus was sitting over in the corner. He says, well, that, that didn't work anymore. I was not at peace with that anymore. And I was like, where did Jesus go? What happened to God? What happened to the presence of the Holy Spirit up in here? I found out that was not going to stay in my life. Because the power and the joy and the love and the, and the presence of the Lord when I was praising Him was a whole lot better than anything that I was experiencing with some girl somewhere. Come on. Come on. So I allowed Him to get inside of me and change my conduct. Thank you, Jesus. And I was already saved by grace. I was already saved because if I wasn't saved and I was going through the cleansing process, He would have never cleansed me. That's right. Come on. I had to be saved. Yes. Then go through the cleansing yes. process. Yes. Come on. You don't go through the cleansing process and then get saved. you got to get saved and let God cleanse yes. you. Yes. That's why people are welcome up in this church that don't right. have it all together. Amen. Because I know God will get inside of them and clean them up as yes, they go. So that's what He did for me. Yes. I was saved by grace and not by works. So people are welcome to come in here and be saved by grace. Amen. And I will give you grace to get it all great. 
But I ain't going to let you sit in the ditch forever. You know what I mean? I'm, a, I'm trying to be a good pastor. you got to come on. I'll get in somebody's ear right now. Listen to you. Oh, oh, oh. You hear everyone going, oh, oh. That can be a number one priority. Oh, he'll do it too. I'll get you here, woman. But I got a lot of grace. I got a lot of grace. Because I know what it's like. Let's just close in prayer here in the name of Jesus. Father, we don't want to live a perverted Christianity. We need your presence. We need your grace in our life. We need you in our life, Lord God. To help us, Lord God, to walk this out. Help us to be accountable to you on a daily basis. To our Father God, we feel your conviction, Lord. And we're worried a whole lot more about what you think than what anybody else does, Father. When you say, Lord God, I like the way you dress, Lord God, that's good enough. Because your convicting power, Lord God, is all we're worried about, Lord, what you think. So Jesus, we're just asking you to cleanse us. To work with us. Let people see the beauty of true holiness. It comes from your Holy Spirit in our life. That it's like a fragrant flower, Lord God. That blooms, Lord, and there is aroma that comes with grace through the Holy Spirit when we get clean with you, Lord. It is beautiful. We start looking like Jesus. We start looking like you, Jesus. We start loving like you, Jesus. We start believing, Lord God, for that long lost uncle, Lord God. That people say it would never change. We believe, Lord God, that He will be changed by Your grace. If we just ask You in, that You would start cleaning Him up, Lord God, from the inside out. No addiction can keep Him down, Lord God. No addiction can keep Him in the grave, Lord, when the resurrection power of Jesus Christ is in His life. So, Lord God, we thank You for that. But there is many, Lord God, that are being cleansed in this area, Lord. Many are being cleaned in this, in this church. Let us not judge one another. Don't look around at other people. Don't judge other people because we're all under construction. We're all at different levels. We're all covered by the same grace. No pointing fingers here. Everybody's accepted. Everybody's a piece of the family. Everybody's got a part. As long as you just walk with Jesus and say yes to Him. It's going to be alright if you say yes to Jesus. So Lord God, we thank You for that tonight. Let's just give Him a hand clap. Let's give God a hand clap.